Hello everyone, it is Teresa from Teresa Silhouette Spot for all things art, where I love sharing art from my heart. How is everyone tonight? Um, I hope good. Are you guys ready to paint? I am. So we will just pull me up here. There we go. And there. So, hello. I was just getting everything. Hey, Angie. I was just getting everything set up. I want to make sure um, things are right for when we get started. Um, if you haven't already traced yours out, I have. But if you need a minute while I'm talking about it, you can trace yours. Um, I use carbon paper when I trace mine, and I've had the same pack of carbon paper for over 10 years. Actually, yesterday I was putting some kits together, and I was finally like, I guess I could throw this one piece away because it lasts and lasts and lasts. So I did actually throw, it was like a half a sheet. But um, maybe I'll get some new ones next time I'm in Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something. So um, I use carbon paper or, and I've showed you guys this before, here is my tracer, I taped it together. I will, let me show you guys real quick. Take a pencil, a regular pencil, and scribble on the lines of the design. And this design is fairly simple, so you could do it. Um, you want to scribble really hard and then when you flip it over and you just trace the lines it actually picks up the pencil marks from the back and puts them on your canvas or your paper or your Bristol board whatever it is you're painting on so that's just one of my little secrets okay so welcome I have put out my paint I have put out my blues and my white I did notice that in the deco art, there was a buttermilk that's kind of like a tannish off-white color. Um, but I didn't do a, an equal of that in the plaid, and I'm very, very sorry. So if you have a little tan or dark brown and you just want to put a drop next to your white, that's fine. Because we're going to use that for our sand. And we don't want our sand very dark anyway. We just don't want our sand really, really white. So I apologize for that. Um, but if you looked on both lists, maybe you caught that error of mine. Um, when you do hop on, say hi, and let me know where you're watching from, is, and if this is your first time taking one of um, my art paint party lessons on a Thursday night. So I am ready to go. I have this, I think it's a three-quarter inch, yeah. So I just have a flat brush, and this is the brush I'm going to use a lot of. I have a liner brush, and then I have another smaller flat brush. But if you just have a liner and a flat brush, that's fine too. And we are going to get started. So now if you see, I have turned my canvas to start out with opposite, horizontal, because I'm going to be painting my sand and my water, and I use a pulling motion when I do that. If I were to keep my canvas like this and try to go like this, which I could do it, but it's a fight, naturally your arm wants to windshield wipe and you have to really fight it to keep it straight. If that's comfortable for you, that's fine. Hi, Marilyn, watch it for the first time. So if that's comfortable for you, fine. I want you guys to be comf comfortable. And if it is your first time, you will notice that I move this any way I need to in order to get the stroke to work the way I want it to. Okay, I don't, the only time I use that easel behind me is for in-person paint parties, um, which I did last night. So. We're gonna get ready with our sand. I have mine traced out. I'm going to get my brush loaded up with white. And when I um, put paint on my brush, I don't go dipping right into the middle of the puddle. I come out here and I pull a little bit of out and then I'm gonna put one corner and what I'm using is cafe latte. You might have a tan, an ivory, a buttermilk, whatever it is. and. We are just going to go in and we're going to start base coating our sand. So because I had a lot on my brush, I started in the middle, but I'm going to go in here and I'm going to draw on this line. If you see, I divided my canvas into three portions, sand, water, sky. You don't have to do that. You can eyeball it, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, I just thought it was easier to get set up and start doing it that way and you'll see that I'm going over um, 
my flamingo, but I still think that I will be able to see my pencil marks. And if not, when we're done, we'll just take our tracer if we have to and lay it right over top our painting and retrace it. And that's, that's fine too. Now this whole time, I picked up some of that cafe latte to begin with, but if you've noticed, I have not gone back into that pile of cafe latte paint. I'm staying strictly in the white now. I have enough of that cafe latte on my brush and in my brush bristles, so I'm not gonna go back in there. I have enough darkness that just spreading it out um, and making it a little bit more even with my white is fine with me. If you want your sand darker, go right ahead and pick up all the dark that you want. It's your project, it's your art, and I always say, and I've always said, it's art, it can't be wrong. So, when you want your paint to blend, you want what's on your brush and what's on your canvas to be wet. Makes sense, right? If there's something that you don't like or want to change about your painting, you need to wait for your paint to dry. And then once it's all dry, whether it dries by itself or you dry it with a heat gun or a hair dryer, you will be ready to fix whatever it is you're not happy with. Now, this is what I have. If I go too fast, don't fret because this recording is going to stay up and you guys will be able to watch it, paint it again, go back and you know change something up if you thought you missed it. And that's okay because this you'll have access as long as this group stays up, you guys will have access to all the free paintings. And if you scroll back, um, there's probably about the six or seven months worth of start to finish paint lessons. But then there's also my lives from when I go live on my page, um, the silhouette spot, and I always share into this group. And those are usually just like a technique or something I'm working on for an order. But these lessons are in this group, start to finish with the supply list and the tracer. So, um, back to our painting. So like I said, um, don't worry if you go over your lines. Now, you can, while we're doing this, I'm gonna show you guys something at the end too, but you can go in and paint the edge. If you're working on a canvas like I am, while we have this same color out, you can go in and paint your edges, if you want. You don't have to paint your edges, and I'm also gonna show you something a little bit like a, a fun technique at the end for our edges. Um, but if you want to, you can go in while we're doing this one color, while we're still working on the white with our sand, and paint the edges. And even though I'm gonna show you guys a technique later that kinda of like makes your painting a little fun and different and stand out, um, I'll paint my edges anyway just so we're all on the same page. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse my brush. I have water here next to me. I wanna rinse my brush. We don't want our brush to come out of the water really, really, really wet. So once I rinse it, I always sandwich it between some paper towels and squeeze to get the water out. Okay, so I am going to move on to the water. Do we have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? No, we're good? Okay, um, I'm gonna move on to the water. I have my three blues out. I think there was sky blue, teal, and aqua on the list. If you have different blues, totally fine. My colors, and I'll note on there, they're always suggestions. And when I'm doing um, a sand, something where I'm going to be blending, um, like the beach with the sand we did, the beach, the sky, I always start out with the lightest color because it's easier than, I mean, yes, you can lighten it up, of course, it's paint, you wait for it to dry, you can lighten it up, but it's easier to go darker and add darker in than it is to um, lighten up, especially because if you wanted to lighten it up, you'd have to wait for it to dry. If you just want to blend in a little bit more dark, you don't have to wait for it to dry. So I am, will be starting with the same like I did on the bottom. I'm starting with my lightest value and then just one corner. See that? Just that one corner in my aqua. And again, 
I'm going to start out here. I'm going to get most of it off my brush. And then I'm going to pick up and I'm going to pull this line. So, and again, with this line and this brushing technique, like I said, you can hold your painting like this and do this. I find it much harder to do a straight line horizontally like that. I think it's easier to do it like this because you're actually looking at both sides. When you're pulling down, I can see that I'm straight because I can see this side of my line and this side of my line. So that's what helps me. If it's a tip that will help you, feel free to try it out. That's why we're here. So, so last night, while I'm blending and picking up my blues, I'll tell you, last night I had a great in-person paint party. It was so much fun. It was with 15, um, I guess high school, middle age students. Uh, it was the first time I worked with this group. They're called the Butterfly Effect. And it's just like empowering young women and, and young kids um, through a program. It's not the Girl Scouts, but it's similar where they do um, all different like life skills and field trips and learning things. Um, they have job preparation. And last night we did the painting. Um, they had, because here on Long Island, wineries. Long Island was a very big um, farming agriculture community. And farms have gone uh, by the wayside, sadly enough. However, apparently the climate is very conducive for grapes and wine. So there's many, many, many wineries near where I live, many. It's gotta be, I don't know, 20, 25, 30, I have no idea. But, so one of the things that the Butterfly Girls did, they had the owner, the, the, the um, group leaders, had the owners of a winery come in and talk to the group about what kinds of jobs and how many jobs are available in the winery field. And I guess in um, like the hosting field. I thought that was pretty cool. I'm like, hmm, I wish I could have went to that. But anyway, I digress. So last night we did painting. It was outside. Um, except for the wind being a little windy, it was really fun. And we painted, I don't know if you saw, but on, um, I need a little more of my light blue. On Tuesday on my page, I painted the palm tree with the big wave and all the funky colors. The, the um, It was like a hot pink and a really dark bright blue and that's what we painted last night they painted it I traced out the design on 8 by 10 canvases and I brought all the supplies and it went really well I think they had a really good time so I had a really good time and then they had I shouldn't say this because I'm supposed to be watching my weight but um, then they had the big sandwich and sodas and chips, individual bags of chips. I didn't have any big sandwich. I'm not a fan of the big sandwich. But I did grab a bag of Fritos for the ride home because I love Fritos. So I said, no, 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 I'm good. I ate. Oh, but I'll be taking a bag of these Fritos for the ride. So, so I have all my blue. Um, and don't worry, if you don't have complete 100% full coverage, and there are spots where I don't, I don't know if you can see, but that's okay, because white is a color, and it just makes it look like your water. So it's really, really fine. So don't worry or fret about that. And once again, I'm gonna go in here, I need another one more blue, and I'm going to paint my edges, but I'm still gonna show you guys. Don't let me forget. Don't let me leave later without showing you a cool technique for doing the edges of your um, boards if you want to be a little bit different and plus so when I do the edges so now my edge is going to be sand water and sky just like the front of my painting but the technique I'm going to show you has your edge looking completely the same all the way around so I think I'm not going to do this edge I'm just going to do this one and I'll show you what I mean when we get to that okay so I'm staying in with my light blue 
And this time I'm going to pick up a little bit of white only because it's going to help my brush move. And I'm going to go up into the sky doing the same thing that we've been doing, but this time I want it much lighter. So this time it's gonna be mostly, mostly white. But even though our canvas is white, we're gonna use white paint because it still makes a difference and we want our brush to be able to move smoothly on our canvas. So I was speaking before about me, you know, I'm trying to lose some of my past two winter weight. Oh, the chili cheese Fritos. I never had those because I'm such a fan of the original Fritos. I would never think to buy, if I'm going to, you know, be treating myself to Fritos, I would never think to buy a different flavor. But maybe I will have to try them. Where was I? Oh, so I'm talking about, you know, trying to lose two winters worth of weight. So yesterday, wait, let me finish this and then I'll, we'll set it aside to dry and I'll tell you this very funny story. So his mine was moving around a little bit, so I'm just going to pick it up and hold it under here. This side is dry with my thumb and my forefinger and paint in my sky. I really think I might have to, um, usually I'm very heavy handed. That might be one of the reasons I do need new, um, uh, what's it, carbon paper? Because I can't see my, I usually don't have an issue seeing my design through my paint, especially with such light colors. I'm pretty heavy handed, but I might be now needing new carbon paper because I'm going to have to, I think, retrace my flamingo. And I'm just going in and I'm doing this edge. So every edge on this side of my painting has been painted. Okay. So I've got a little white on there. Let's put that down for a minute. So let this dry. You guys can keep painting while I ramble. So, oh, look at me how hot I am. Did I tell you what? I have a rule. So, no HVAC October and May. So, I have a rule about not putting the heat on until November 1st. And then I have another rule, which I might be breaking, to tell you the truth, of not putting the air conditioning on until June 1st. So, no heat or AC in May and no heat or AC in October. And so far this year, um, it hasn't been really, really hot, but it's been really hot in my house. I don't leave my windows open or anything when I go to work because, you know, I get nervous. So when I come home, it's pretty hot in here. So I'm waiting for this to dry. You guys might still be painting. You guys might be waiting. Oh, trying to catch up. Okay. Maybe you want to see it while you catch up and I talk. Like I said, don't worry about... Um, that's great. I'm going to talk so you can catch up, but don't forget, you'll have access to this video to come back and um, watch at your leisure. So yesterday, my husband works nights. So the only time during the week we get to see each other is on Wednesday mornings. I don't go to my nine to five on Wednesdays and he leaves for work at like one or two during the week. So yesterday we were in the kitchen, we were having breakfast. I was having my iced coffee. Everybody knows I have my iced coffee every morning and usually peanut butter on bread. So he gets this really, really nice toasted corn muffin. And I was like, oh, hmm, that's pretty nice. Look at that nice drippy butter and the toasted corn muffin. It was looking really nice. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, hmm, where are the rest of the corn muffins? And he goes, I only bought one. I was like, what? Oh, that's how we're doing it now, huh? You only bought one? And he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I, you gotta smooth this. He's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Back it up, back it up. And I was like, he goes, what happened to, don't buy any cookies, I'm trying to lose weight. Don't buy any ice cream, I'm trying to lose weight. Don't buy anything I like, I'm trying to lose weight. <laughs> so I was like, 
Oh yeah, that's right. I said, I was just testing you. I'm glad you didn't buy any muffins because I don't need a muffin. And he goes, I'm going to buy a hundred muffins now and you're going to eat every one of them. So, I'm not and he's not, but I was like, oh yeah, I did. So you do listen sometimes when you're not getting me treats and really buttery toasted corn muffins. But anyway, so that is my story. So I am going to put out some of my pinks. I have magenta and baby pink. You can use whatever dark and light pink that you like. Um, and I'm going to show you. So my um, hibiscus, which I can never remember the name of hibiscus. My hibiscus has a couple of different, It ha well, not a couple. It has like five, one, two, three, one and a half, like three and a half um, petals, I guess. So I'm going to show you guys two ways to do the hibiscus. I'm gonna show you um, an easier way and then a little bit um, of a harder way with the one stroke technique. But if once you get down the one stroke technique with the double loading of the brush, it becomes the much easier and quicker way than the easy way, okay? So I'm just gonna trace out, I can still see them, my hibiscus with very light pencil marks. I'm just going over the ones I have so I can see. That'll help me a little bit. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, okay. So you might have to trace yours in too. Okay, put you back down. We have our sky, our blue water, and our sandy beach. I'll show you on this one, and I'll show you on this one first. I'm gonna get a liner brush. I'm going to pick up my dark pink, whatever dark pink that is that you have. You can even do your hibiscus hibiscus flowers and purples, blues, it's up to you. So the, I'm going to take the dark pink and trace my hibiscus. I'm using a little pressure on my liner brush because I want the line fairly thick. Okay. Then I'm going to pick up my smaller flat brush with the light pink and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to fill it in and then filling it in we're picking up some of the magenta and we're getting some blending going but we have our pink to the outside our hot magenta pink to the outside and our light pink to the inside and we're going to leave that for now with both techniques, we go back in and add details. So that's what we're gonna leave for now. That's the one petal of our hibiscus, okay? With the one stroke technique, we're going to double load our brush. So we're gonna put one corner in the light pink, the other corner in the dark pink, and we're gonna make this little runway here and we want to really get our brush loaded with paint. And this takes some practice, and you can do your entire hibiscus the way I just did this one leaf, I mean this one petal now, if you want. I'm just showing you guys this, and you can come back and rewatch this to get a feel for how to do this. And now I have this brush loaded with half magenta and half baby pink. There is no water on my brush. Um, even if I do dip water on my brush, if your paints are a little thick, feel free to pick up the tiniest drop or two of water, but there is no water on my brush. And if I do put water on my brush, I really try and squeeze it out um, with the paper towel. 
And when my, if my paint is dry or I'm having a little time moving my brush, I use, don't pay attention to the label because Folk Art has done a complete rebranding re now, but I use Folk Art floating medium and not water. And it case, so it's just, it's like a gel. And I put a couple of drops out on wherever I keep my paint. And it's just this clear gel and I'll put it just a tiny bit on my brush and then I'll come over here and I'll work it in the same way with the runway. But I tend to stay away from the water. Okay. So we have our dark to the outside, just like we had here. We're going to put our brush down on a flat. So I'm putting it, I don't know if you guys can see. I'm standing my brush up right here. Here's my pencil mark. And I'm going to keep the dark to the outside. And I'm going to flatten my brush out and come around keeping the dark to the outside. And pulling down. Okay. I'll show you again. I'm going to pick up some of the dark, some of the light. I'm going to work it in. Then I'm going to do it again. I'm, I'm going to just go over. So I'm standing up and you can see my brush lines up. My brush lines up right here with the dark and the light. So I'm going to give it a push. I'm keeping the dark to the outside. Now my brush is flat. The dark is still to the outside. The dark is still to the outside. And I pick it up and I land standing up. I started standing up over here. I land standing up over here. Okay. And then I'm just going to fill in the center. I could do another stroke if I wanted to. The same, follow the same stroke I did. Um, if I used a bigger brush, I would not have to have filled in the center. It would have happened. But, so I'm gonna show you again, okay? Paint on my brush. This one's a little trickier because this one's going off the paper, or off the canvas. So, I'm standing up with my dark, oh, you can't see, my dark to the outside. My pencil mark is right. Yeah, let me make it darker for you. My pencil mark is right here. So I'm standing up here and I'm gonna push down and I'm going to curve right off the paper, the canvas. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna push down again to there for the other hibiscus petal. And I'm gonna put some of the light pink on there and just fill it in. And like I said, right now, that's a very hard technique, how to hold your brush. You can go back and look at previous um, videos of mine because I explain it in other videos. But once you get the technique, it's so much easier, well, especially for me, I've been doing it a long time, to just pick up the paint and you have both colors on your brush and just go in and you're shading and highlighting in one stroke. Okay, same thing here. I'm just gonna pick up, I'm keeping my dark to the outside and doing that side. And then I'm doing this side. It's a little different with these ones that are falling off the um, canvas. Maybe I'll show you on some scrap paper. What do you think? Well, we're working on it, right? 
put this aside for one second. I'll show you again. I'm going to do it on the back of my flamingo. I'm just going to do the one. So a hibiscus is one, a U. And then another U on the inside. And then there's five of them and they go around. Okay? So I'm going to double load. Nice amount of paint on my brush. Half and half. I'm standing up and I'm going to push down keeping the dark pink to the outside now see how I flattened my brush and I'm keeping the dark pink the magenta to the outside of the circle keeping it to the outside of the circle and then I bring it in and stand up So, like I said, you will have this recording and you'll be able to come back and watch it at your leisure. So now I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do the center. I'm going to put a little, just a dot using the corner of my brush to do a dot. And then I'm just going to pull out the center of my hibiscus. And we're going to let that dry for now. And I think I need to go back in and... Um, Oh no, now I got the back of my painting wet. I mean my uh, tracer wet from showing you. Silly. Now I need to use it again. I should have done it where the flamingo was and then I wouldn't have had to worry about it. Okay, plenty dry. Okay. Oh, I need a piece of carbon. Excuse me. So I'm going to line this up again. I know where my foot was, and I know I lined it to this edge. I tape it down so it doesn't move. Then I slip this right under it. And then you can take a pen, a pencil, whatever it is that you want. And I'm going to go in, and I'm going to retrace my flamingo on here. The inside wing, the little, roughly tail feathers, the parts around his little legs. The little skinny legs, the knob. I think that's everything. Yes. Okay. I told you, look how ratty this is. This is how long I've had all this, this carbon paper. Okay. Alrighty. So now I have my Pelican, okay? I'm gonna pick up that same brush that I was using. I did stick it in the water, but that's okay. I'm gonna pick it back up again. Squeezing it out to dry. And I'm going to start with my magenta. And I'm going to paint the entire pelican. A lot of times when I paint, I paint the way I color and I'll go in and I'll do all the borders first. I just find that that's easier than when I'm ready to go in and start painting. I know where I'm at. And I know where to keep my paint, the boundaries, the edges within. 
I'm using the same flat brush, but I'm using it up on the tip. instead of flail, flailed out um, on the bottom thick. See, I'm standing up with it. I'm even going to fill in a little bit of the beak here because that's where it is. But we're gonna go back and we're gonna do our beak in black. And now I'm just gonna fill in the entire thing. I find it easier to um, when I'm painting a shape like this where I've traced it on, I find it easier to do the border and then go fill it in, but that's just me. If you don't wanna do that and you wanna work in sections and paint as you go, um, it's your art, it's your project. And I always say it's art, it can't be wrong. And don't fret if you go a little out of the line don't fret if you can see your pencil marks. None of that matters at this point. This is just about base coating. When I base coat, I do try and still follow the shape of the object. Like I'm following the breastbone here of the flamingo. Um, now I'm following the way the feathers theoretically would go to the back. They would go underneath in here and over the top here. But I don't worry so much about going seeing the pencil lines or going a little bit out of bounds out of lines out of the out of the lines out of the border because we have so many details to add and we're going to go back in and we're going to add some white highlights and some black shading that none of that is going to matter your painting has to go through a somewhat ugly stage before it gets to the nice stage. So we don't worry about that. And then a lot of times when I'm doing florals, the trick is, I'll show, I'll give, I'm gonna give you guys my secret. So when I'm working on a painting, um, that's not one of my paintings, but let's say on this book here behind me, where is it right there? Um, you have this whole thing good and then you have a flower that you don't love. Don't tell me but I'll add a leaf. Just cover it up, just add another leaf here. Or if you don't like that leaf, add another flower. Or if you don't like the leaf and the flower, add a ribbon. So it's paint, you can fix anything. Don't give away my secrets, okay? So we have our pelican almost nearly base coated. We'll give him his little skinny legs here. I'm trying to see which leg I think the 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 one that makes the four courses over. I don't know if that matters, but I think pelicans pelicans. It's a flamingo. I think flamingos are such a cool bird. Pelicans are a pretty cool bird too. So um, I'm gonna take the back of my brush, I'm gonna dip it in there, and I'm just gonna put a circle in there for his little knobby knee, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. Okay? And then with the same brush, with the dark paint on it, I'm not going crazy detailing in pelican feet. I'm just adding in three little brush strokes down there for his feet. Okay. Alrighty. Now, while our brush is wet with the pink, we're gonna pick up a little bit of the light pink and we're just going to go in here and we're going to just start adding some light pink. Dirty brush, doesn't matter. You can keep your brush, you can stand it up and pull, which I'm going to do here for these side feathers. So I'm still adding the magenta on. I haven't washed my brush, but I'm going in here 
and I'm adding in the light pink for his side wing. And then I'm going to go in, I'm just going to add in, pulling up some tail feathers like that. And like I said, I don't even wash my brush. I'm just mixing the light pink, and in my case, the baby pink, in with the magenta. Just like that. See if we have any questions. Nope, all good. Okay, so I'll pick it up so you guys can see where I am at so far. So we just started adding in a little bit of the details on the flamingo with our dirty brush. We have our flower base coated, our whole background base coated, and now we're going to get into the fun part. So now we're going to get into the fun part. I'm going to rinse that brush. I'm going to get out my liner brush. I'm going to put out, um, I think I'll put out some greens and yellows first. I'm going to need a little bit of green and a tiny bit of yellow. I might even use, so if you had out your tan or if you used some burnt umber before, excuse me, um, for your white. I might mix it. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm just going to use my liner brush and squeeze it out. And when I use my liner brush, I like to keep it on a point. So I'll twirl it in on the side of my pile. I'm going to go in. I'm going to add the grass. So I like to pull. So when I do my grass, I like to pull. So I have now turned my board upside down but you don't have to you can leave it and do it this way however way you're comfortable and I'm making them cross over I'm making some longer I'm gonna pick up some yellow while I'm at it and mix them in here I'm gonna pick up some browns and mix them in here too go back to my green Sometimes I use a little bit more pressure and make my grass thicker. Sometimes I use less pressure and make it thinner. And that's it. We just want a little bit of beach grass down there. I might add a little bit here too, just cause. Pick up a little bit of that brown I had out already. Let me get a little bit more green. There we go. Put in my clumpy grass. All right, now I'm gonna watch, rinse my brush. And now we're gonna start adding in all of our black and white highlights. I'm gonna need a little bit of fresh white and a little bit of black. comes out it's not coming out of that one it amazes me how much like paint you really don't need usually like I put out too much blues there but usually you don't need anything more than what looks like a quarter size paint okay again I'm going to go into the side of my black I want my liner brush to be pointy, almost like a pencil. See that? And I'm going to outline all my elements in here. This is why I said it didn't totally matter if your lines on your flowers weren't perfect if you went into the blue a little bit when you didn't want to. Because when we go back in 
and we add in our black lines, it makes up for all of that. See that? And like even there. So look how far off I am on that. But when I go in white and I add my white highlight, I just put it in there. It's all good. It's okay. So put a little bit of black down here where the feathers come over his little skinny legs. Like that. Oops. A little bit of shading under his belly. A little bit of shading back up here over his back. Maybe add a little bit of a couple of black ones. To his back. A little shading around. And then the end of his beak, the end of his beak gets a whole black triangle. Okay? So I'm painting that, I'm filling that in. And then we outline the whole thing the rest of the way up here, and then just put a line in the middle. See that? Then I'm going to use the back of the brush. I'm going to give him a little eye right there. I'm going to wait for that to dry because then we're going to come back in and we're going to add in um, a white dot on that. Okay? Now I'm just going to go in and add some dots to the center of our flower. And then my rinse. And I'm going to pick up our nice, fresh white. And I'm basically going to go around and do almost the same thing, maybe just not as much. I'm going to go in, I'm going to add white highlights. And when I add my white highlights, I usually add them all to the same side. So for example, on the flower, I did it to the left of every petal. Okay. When I do the white on his legs, I'm gonna do it on the opposite side of where I put the black. Let me give some in here. I'm making little triangles back here so it almost looks like his tail feathers. Put a little white up here on the neck, on his beak. Okay, and then I'm going to, you can use the tip of your brush and add white dots into your hibiscus, or I like to use the back of the brush too and go in here and put. white dots. And then like I said before, where I don't like how I went out here with the black too much, I'm going to get my white in there. And that's it. She wouldn't even know I did something that I didn't really like. And then I'm going to add lightly, lightly, lightly a little bit of fresh white on top of my water. It makes it look a little like um, white caps. I like the paint to be a little thick, but still light. If there was any place where you didn't think that you had um, good coverage with your blue. See, I'm just wiggling wiggle, 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 and getting skinny. So if there any places where maybe you didn't think or you didn't like the coverage that you had with your blue when you did the beach, I mean, when you did the water, now that your painting dried, just add a wave. And I'm just using my liner brush, and I'm gently 
wiggling, thin and thicker. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Pick up some of my fresh white and gently wiggle it. And I think, let me check. I think I write myself notes so I stay in order for you guys when I'm teaching it. So I'm like, oh, go back here, go back there. I like to follow um, steps. So I look at the painting before I start to paint it and write myself notes. So when I'm teaching, um, I can be organized. So I just wanna make sure that I didn't, um, oh, the one little dot, see, good thing. So now if you're, Eye is dry. You want to come up here and put a little white dot in the center. And there we have it. So, oh, oh, no, okay. I was confused about the time for a minute. Anyway, so here is our flamingo on the beach. If you want, you can put your initials, you can put the date. Um, I know someone who puts a ladybug on everything she paints, so we can add, I might do this, let me see, get my brush, look, I'm going to just add, oh, I forgot to show you the guy, we were talking about the side of the painting, the border, so I'm going to go in, I'm going to add a couple of seagulls. It's just a V with the white and a little line on it. And they're there. You can't really see them. So a fun way to do the edge of your painting, I'm just drying off my um, flat brush again. Thank you. A fun way to do the edge of the painting, if you want, you can do it this way where it matches and wraps around. Or you can take um, black or one of the colors from your painting. I'm gonna use one of the colors from my painting because I like the colors from my painting. And if you've been following me or my page, you know that this um, teal, aqua, patina, this whole family of blues has been my color. So, you wanna go in, you can just go in and add stripes around the edge of your painting, the width of your brush. So you wanna eyeball what would be a width of the brush in between. And we're just gonna go around the whole thing and we're gonna pull down and we want, you know, we want fairly decent coverage. And we're just eyeballing it. It does not have to be perfect. Obviously some of them are gonna be a little bit closer um, than others are gonna be a little bit far away. We're not going to fret about that. And we're going to, for this, for painting is supposed to be relaxing. We're going to put our type A and our OCD out the window and just appreciate painting and the art. So how cute does that look? I could go around the whole thing, and I might, but um, I could let you guys go. And you can, like I said, you guys can rewatch this. Look how cute. Isn't that cute? So this was the one side where I painted it and wrapped it around to match. And this is the other side, and I think I'm going to go around. I'm going to do that on all, all of the sides. So anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. I hope you um, enjoyed painting the flamingo tonight. I will be putting up a post um, this week sometime for what we're going to do. I'll let you guys vote again for what we can paint in June. If you are local, I know sometimes I have local people on here or they're watching the replay. We're doing this, the camper in person on Monday. I have some spots left. This is an 18-inch camper. It comes with um, twine for hanging. And that is also in the events on my page. 
and that's it. So, thank you guys for joining me. I love you all. Stay safe. And if you have any questions, um, throw it in the comments. I'll come back. I will even jump on a live with you or a Zoom with you. If there's something you're confused about, you want some help with, I'm here to help you. I want you guys to be happy and proud of any of the projects that you um, do with me. I want you guys to be happy and proud to hang them or show them off or whatever it is. So when you paint, please post your finished project for all of us. This is a closed group and only people who paint are in this group. And so it is a safe and no judgment zone. Okay? Love you guys. Have a great night.